am back again. This is Dorothy with Dot Scrapbooking, and these are cards five and six, I think. I'm losing count. So this is our next project, and the pieces have been cut, and here I'm going to be putting them together. So I get my two A2s and fold them, get a nice crease, And here we go. It is five, five and six. <laughs> Yay. Thank goodness for my sandwich bags, even if they don't have food in them. So I like this combination of the uh, flor floral with the stripe craft paper. You know, it's not something I would have put together but it comes out looking striking. And so I kind of like that, that I get, I get pushed to do things that I wouldn't have picked out. So that just kind of makes it, um, oop, just kind of neat that, that uh, somebody else comes up with these ideas that just kind of push your own. It's Daisy talking. She probably sees somebody walking on the streets. So anyway, I like I like having uh, different people give out different ideas and just kind of, you know, open my brain up. And look at that cute little zip strip highlighting the the sentiment portion. So putting this on, I mean, once you get all the pieces cut then putting it together is really kind of pleasurable. And so I, I like that to just kind of, you know, give yourself a break instead of doing the cutting and immediately putting them together. I'm going to have to go check on her. Sorry. Sorry about that. She was, she, there was somebody out there, but it wasn't for us. So we have our florals and our stripes, and we're just kind of giving kind of a, little border of white around the edges and then we've got our sage background uh, and we're doing a vertical and a horizontal card and that's what's cool about these layouts is that you're you're cutting essentially the same almost all the same piece, pieces um, but you're doing two different layouts so to get two different looking cards which I love that so isn't that a pretty border from the zip strip? That is just so, so pretty. So there's the one, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the second. And then we'll start doing the stamping. And putting the rest of the card together. See, I do like that other side. That's the daisy. And if you wanted to, you could flip the this background over and have the daisy show. And I think that would make a cute card also. See how Ginger is going. I have noisy dogs, is all I have to say. So I've used the kind of textured look. Um, instead of the kind of uh, watercolorish color of the sage, just to have it's a little bit darker, so it's a little bit stronger uh, outline for the stitched rectangles. You know, and I just learned that the stitched rectangles, unfortunately, are no longer available, which is unfortunate. Now they there are squared, square stitched. Um, stitched squares, uh, same idea with the same borders and the same center parts. So you could use squares instead of rectangles. So this card is going to get one of the little florals up towards the top and it's going directly onto the uh, sentiment piece. And so that, uh, and it's done with, of course, my favorite 
intense black so that I can go in and color it with with my tri-blend markers. Giving a good press on there and counting to usually to five so I get as much ink absorption into the cardstock as possible and then you get a really good stamp. So I'm going to go ahead and color. I'm using uh, my tri-blend markers. You can kind of pick and choose colors that you that you want. And, uh, you know, I chose the, the, I don't know if that's dull green. It might be dull green or yellow green. That's ginger having anxiety. Gee, I keep her on CBD treats, but it doesn't help enough. So I think this is the dull green. And it, it goes well with these papers. So I'm kind of doing a dark edge with the lighter color to kind of give some shadowing effect. So you can color like a whole part of the leaf or the floral, the flower, and you can color it all in the um, light color and then add the dark um, around the edges if you want, or um, I'm coloring uh, the dark all around. I just, you know, I kind of decide while I'm doing something that, that well, let me just do it this way. No, you can do, you know, whatever. Actually, this is the lighter end. It's not the darker end. So I'm coloring the whole floral in the yellow, the light color, whatever color it is, the light. And then you can come back and add um, the medium or the dark for an edge. And that's the, that's the look that you get. So when I added the coral floor, flower, added the coral color to the flower, um, the small flower. So now we've got the flower just kind of mimics the, um, repeats the pattern of the yellow flower on the dark background. And so, you know, it, it just kind of brings the flowers from the background to the foreground. So... With these cards, um, I've said before, you choose your sentiments. You know, I'm sure you've got a, a card sentiment stamp set that will have numerous um, sentiments on it. So if you need a bunch of thanks, thank you cards, then you can make a whole bunch of thank you cards. Or, you know, anniversary, birthday, congratulations, thinking of you, hope you get well, all of those things can be used on these cards. You know, it's just what do you need and what do you use the most of. So I've pulled off a couple of the open hearts and also uh, the little tiny stitch hearts. These little guys are kind of hard to find. And you think, oh, I, there's only one, but you know, no, there's two. So um, I do like these open hearts. Then you're just kind of showing your background through. And I'm just using a little bit too much Tombow. But it's easy, it's easy to use. You just really need to dot it around. And I like that little stitch heart to just kind of also repeat the pattern of the stitched uh, border around the sentiment. So there we've got our, our other little stitched heart. So it's always good when you're making something to re repeat a pattern or a color so that you're bringing everything together. And, you know, I learned this a long time ago before I ever did any scrapbooking uh, when I worked as a docent at the Dallas Arboretum and uh, learned about repeating patterns from the house that was built there a long time ago. 
and the house, the outside of the house was kind of built in an octagon and then you go in and there's the foyer is built in a high ceilinged octagon and then there's an octagon, I think a baptismal font was in the middle uh, to hold, you know, fla flowers, you know, a bouquet as you come in and then you go into the house and you know there are, everything is based on the octagon or a half the half of the octagon cut in half and so you know you see that i didn't like the way my stamping came out so you can just go right over it and if you want you can pop it up but um anyway that's i thought i had never i didn't know anything about design and when I saw that, and, and I, docent, I was a docent in that house for a number of years, and so I knew the house like the back of my hand. And you learn to appreciate it the more you walk through, or when you see the repeating patterns, and then you start seeing them, and they're kind of hidden. And so you're going around finding... Uh, it's, it's cool. So anyway, I'm just saying that repeating your pattern adds strength to your design. So there we've got wishing you well and a happy birthday. I really like those yellow flowers. And so just to make something not look flat, you want to add an edge of, of um, shadowing, darkening the color. And then I'm just adding three little dots to add uh, my sequins. And you want to kind of keep things in triangles for to have your eye move around. So, and I'm using my little pickup tool that's made of wax. And of course, you wouldn't want to just touch wax so they've got paper around it. And then as the tool uh, gets worn down, then you just peel the paper off. And you see, you've got a long tool there. So it'll last you for a very long time. And the sequins are perfect for cards because they won't get in the way um, and won't get caught in the sorting machine. So there's our little sequins. So pretty little card. And then the next cards we're doing are um, card number six. And we've got full backgrounds. Well, almost full. There's about a, oh, they, they might be, let me see. The A2 card is four and a quarter by five and a half. So these backgrounds were probably cut at four by five and a quarter. And that gives you just a little bit, about an eighth of an inch all around. Um, of the white card showing. So here we've got card number six. And so on the card number five, we used the inside of the rectangle, the stitched rectangle. So on card number six, so there's one side and then you flip it and you've got the other. On card number six, we're going to use the outside of the stitched rectangle. So when you cut that the rectangles or the squares, you get two pieces. You get the inside and the outside. And now I'm just cutting my doily in half. And then again, so we're going to have quarter inch doilies. Quarter inch. Quarter round doilies. So they're going to go in the little corners there. So I love that. I just think that's super cute. So I like um, the fact that, you know, we cut smaller pieces of the deep color, the pine, which is going to be one of our new colors starting September 1, except they will be available to all of the crafters, scrappers, and, and card makers. I think they're going to be available, the uh, cardstock and the ink, uh, will be available in Pine starting July 1st. So super cool. This is a really great color. And I think it's a super great asset to uh, our collection.
Boop. Always running out. Guess that means I'm doing a lot of work. So I'm just using my Tombow for ease to go around the outside of the the uh, pond. Pretty. And look at how nice that looks. The frame, the white, da white daisy frame and uh, the pine just really have a great contrast. So the uh, little piece that we're using is um, the stitched re rectangle is going to be is kind of small so my sentiment has to be a little bit small and we've got a great one now if you notice I'll put the stamp down face down and then pick it up with my block and that way your stamp if you just put it right on your block a lot of times something thin like this might get curved and so when you put it just down on your tabletop uh, and pick it up it will be straight because it the stamp has muscle memory and it um, just kind of gets its shape back compared to you picking it up and putting it on there so adding the um, tri-blend marker around the stitched area um, it looks like you've stitched it with thread so that's kind of cool. You can still see the stitch, the, uh, you know, the holes, but it looks like it's been stitched. So fun. That's my kind of, that's my kind of sewing. Sorry, but ironing, not so fond of, and uh, hand stitching I'm not so fond of either. Guess I did too much of it when I was a kid doing a lot of sewing. So I'm going to make a bouquet to add to our, our card. And another one for the other card. And I, of course I always use my little either the foam pad here or on the flip side of my layout board, there's there's foam that um, does a really nice job if you're doing a bunch of stamping. So this one I'm just outlining, and then I'll come back with the lighter color. So here we go making making a big pretty floral so we started off with the darkest and then we're using the light and just kind of going over all the petals it's super pretty and I'm just going to add a little of the medium in there to kind of uh, soften the uh, the uh, space between the very light and the very dark coral and then we're making little white flower little yellow flowers so anyway it'll it'll look nice on there It'll add a little bit more color than what is in the backgrounds, but the colors will go well with the backgrounds. So I love the idea of taking the doily. I like cutting them in half, but I like making these um, quarter cuts because it just looks so cute nestled up in that little corner of the uh, pine background. I think I like I like it a lot. It was a great idea. So here we are coloring. I I like I mean I I didn't care for coloring until I mean as I got older. 
I did when I was a kid, of course. But these tri-blend markers really um, have kind of brought out my, my uh, kind of excitement to color because you look like you're really kind of creating something that, um, you know, has depth to it. And uh, I just, I feel like I'm, I'm doing, doing more with, with this rather than, you know, just one color, you know, per, per, you know, one color of leaf, one color of flower, you know, just having the, the ability to blend just really, um, I think, adds to the fun of, of coloring. So when you have to think about these things, like that's so much work, but you know, it's really, it's relaxing. Um, you don't have all the fussy cutting to do because you have the, the thin cuts to help you out from that standpoint. A lot of, a lot of women like to do the fussy cutting because it's super relaxing and uh, anything to, you know, relax you and kind of take the stress out of here. I think sometimes we don't even realize how stressed we are uh, until we start doing something like crafts. And it just uh, can be so relaxing. It takes your mind off of, you know, awful things that are going on in the world. And it just puts you in a better, a better frame of mind. So from that standpoint, the coloring with the tri-blend markers has been um, very enjoyable for me. And then look, I have pretty things to show for it. Left out a little yellow there. I'm just going to add a little dark to the center of that one. So it really looks pretty with the, um, the coral is the, just blends perfectly with the peach cardstock, which is what the doily is made out of. I thought I was supposed to put a quarter round doily in there, but maybe not. Maybe I decided against it. So here we've got our sweet little daisies for the background. And once again, we've got this beautiful pine color. And I'm putting the watercolorish looking part up to kind of see it has some streaks going through it like it's been brushed with a, with a, um, you know, lighter color of ink over the the darker color and see now we've got if you look on the outside of the card you've got a white frame going around the sage background with the flowers and now you've got the second frame white frame going around the pine so once again that's a repeating pattern that just kind of brings your eye towards the center. So, and that just goes top and center. So we're gonna put a, uh, another sentiment here and I uh, don't know what I'm gonna pick out. These are probably some of my favorite cards that we've done. Made a lot of cards and I really, really like these. And I'm stamping, just so you know, I'm stamping in Harbor. So it's not quite as strong uh, a color. It's a dark color, but it's not as strong as black. And we're going to have a thank you. I could pop it up, but I'm just going to put it flat and kind of set it over to the edge there. It's 
So, all we have left are the sequins. And uh, just put my little dots down. And I hope you like these cards. I've got one more set to do, cards seven and eight. And uh, I will be doing that probably tomorrow. So if you uh, like the cards, please give me a thumbs up. You know, this kit is still available. The only thing that's not available are the stitched rectangles. And like I said, those can be, you can do stitch squares or just cut rectangles if you want. Or hopefully you have the stitch rectangle been cut already. So if you haven't subscribed, I hope you think about subscribing to my channel and ringing the bell. And uh, I all, uh, just I think I always have some information about the kit that I'm making or the cards or pages that I'm making um, below. And there's always a, a um, link to my dorothy.closetomyheart.com, which is where you can uh, purchase any of the things that you see me using uh, online super easy to do and uh, but there's also links down below for specific items so I think I've got a I have a link to the to the card kit the hope and kindness card kit below too so we're adding just a couple of the little die cuts some hearts because you're sending you're sending you're you know thinking of you I care about you to people so you want to send a little of your heart there and those are my dots for my sequins almost done here There we go. So my, I need to put some anti-static uh, powder in my, my craft kit because I put my finger near and all the sequins jump on my fingers. So there we are with our two cards all completed. It's so pretty. Really love these. So I thank you. Thank you for watching. And up next will be cards seven and eight. So thanks for watching. Bye. Hi, I'm Dorothy Smith. Thanks for watching my video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel and learn along with me. Thanks. Bye-bye.